Today's video is all about X-linked traits and how they are inherited. Now, X-linked traits are contrasted with autosomal traits. Autosomal traits are traits that are inherited according to Mendel's laws, capital letters for dominant traits, lowercase letters for recessive traits, monohybrid crosses, dihybrid crosses. That's all pretty straightforward stuff. X-linked traits are different, though, because these are traits that are located on the X chromosome, which means we have to treat them a little differently because not everybody's got two X chromosomes. Just like everybody's got two alleles for an autosomal trait, well, only females have two alleles for an X-linked trait. Males have only one because they have only one X chromosome. So the best way to understand this is to look at an example. Let's look at the human disease hemophilia. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder, and the gene for this uh, disease is found on the X chromosome. So when I write out symbols for hemophilia, by the way, it happens to be a recessive disease. When I write out the symbols, I can use a little h for hemophilia and a big h for no hemophilia, but that doesn't help me with the X and Y chromosomes. So what we do with symbols for X-linked traits is we use X's with the symbols. So an X with a superscript of big H, in this case, would be no hemophilia. That means an allele for hemophilia would be an X with a little h. So when we write the genotype of an individual this time, we wouldn't just simply write it as X big H, X little h for heterozygous. We would write it as X big H, X little h like this. And we can both the big X's. All right. Now, that would be fine if the entire population of the world were female, because then we could have homozygous, no disease. We could have homozygous with hemophilia. But those are all females. So we also need to include males. So we need to include the Y chromosome. Now the Y chromosome technically has nothing to do with hemophilia. So I'm just going to put NA for not applicable. Doesn't have anything to do with hemophilia, but it's got everything to do with half of the world's population. Which means there are two possible genotypes for a male. A male could have an X with a big H and a Y and have no hemophilia. Or a male could have an X with a little H and a Y and have hemophilia. So those are all the different genotypes and phenotypes that, that we could have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a cross, a typical genetic cross involving parents. First parent, we're going to have a heterozygous female. Another word for a heterozygous female in excellent traits would be a carrier female. That means she carries the allele for hemophilia, but she doesn't have hemophilia. And we're going to mate her with a male who does not have hemophilia. So a male without hemophilia would have to have an X big H, and then, of course, a Y. So what we're going to do is make a Punnett square, just like we would with an autosomal tree. What we're going to do is separate the alleles for the female. So half of her ova are going to be X big H, and half of her ova are going to be X little H. Then we'll do the same thing for the male. Half of his sperm are going to be X big H, and half of his sperm are going to be Y. So we're just separating the alleles to make our Punnett square, just like we would if this was an autosomal trait. Now we have to fill in our Punnett square. And when I fill in this first square, we're going to have X big H, X big H. So in terms of the genotype, well, that's X big H, X big H is the genotype. But in terms of the phenotype, we actually have to state two things here. Because we don't just state whether or not this individual is hemophilia. But we also know the gender of this individual. So that becomes part of the phenotype. So X big H, X big H would be a female with no hemophilia. So X big H, X big H equals female and no hemophilia. Next square is going to be X big H, X little h. So it's a different genotype. But this individual would have the same phenotype as the previous one. Also, female with no hemophilia. Now, technically, this female would be a carrier, but the statement that she's a carrier is a statement of her genotype. The statement of her phenotype is female, no hemophilia. 
All right, this square, we have x big hy. So this individual is going to be a male as a result of the y chromosome. And the x big h is going to be the dominant allele, which is normal. So this is going to be a male with no hemophilia. And then the last square is going to be x little h and y. So this is going to be a male as well. But in the absence of another uh, h, another big h, to cancel out the little h, well, this male is going to have hemophilia. All right, so that's the symbols that we use. Pedigree charts are the same, whether it's X-linked or whether it's autosomal. But let's take a look at some sample questions to see how we'd solve them. So I'm just going to scroll down. I've got a couple of questions here we can use. All right, here's one. So this question, if we read the information at the beginning, it says the gene for a light-sensitive protein found on red columns and the gene for a light-sensitive protein found in green columns lie side by side on the X chromosome. I'm going to highlight that X chromosome. That tells us that this, this trait is red and green, and the inability to distinguish between them is an X-linked trait. It's on the X chromosome. Now, we read further, it talks about a gene for a light-sensitive protein found in blue cones discovered on chromosome 7. Well, chromosome 7 is not one of the uh, sex chromosomes, not the X or the Y, so that means that blue color blindness would be involved in autosomal. Um, that would be an autosomal trait. Then it tells us mutations to any of these genes could result in common forms of color blindness. The mutant alleles for these disorders are recessive. That's pretty important. It's recessive. So the trait we're dealing with here is X-linked and it's recessive. Um, here we have a pedigree chart, and the pedigree chart is for red-green color blindness in human beings. So if we're dealing with red-green color blindness in human beings, we are dealing with the part that's on the X chromosome, and we definitely know it's recessive. So I'm going to set up some symbols for red-green color blindness. I'm going to set up, I'm going to call this X big B. We'll just call this B for blindness. So this would be colorblind. I'm sorry, this would be normal vision, because this is dominant. So normal color vision. So x little b is going to be colorblind. But we also have to remember there are y chromosomes out there. Half the world's population is gone. It has nothing to do with colorblindness, but we have to include lies. So those are some symbols we can use to represent the alleles that are involved uh, in red-green colorblindness. Now let's take a look at what the question's actually asking. Based on this pedigree, well, we have to read each statement and see which statements are true. Part A, the probability that an individual 2-4 is a carrier is 50%. So let's take a look at individual 2-4 right here. And we're being told probability is 50% they're a carrier. Now, term carrier would be x big B, x little b. That would be a carrier. Now, to figure this one out, we have to look at her child. And in particular, she has a male child, individual 3, 4, who's got color blindness, which means he is, I'll write it down here, he is x little b, y. Now, he must have gotten his y chromosome from his father. Okay, the Y comes from dad, not from mom. So the X little b had to come from mom. So if the X little b came from mom, we know she's got an X little b. But she doesn't have color blindness, which means we know she's got an X big b. So it's not that she's 50% chance of being a carrier. Um, she is a carrier. She has to be, or she could not have donated this X little b chromosome to her son. So A could not possibly be true. Part B says it's impossible to determine whether individual 2-6 is a carrier. So we have individual 2-6. Now we don't have any children for individual 2-6 to compare, but we can certainly look at individual 2-6's father, because this individual 1-1 one, one, must have been X little b y. Now, he did not give his Y chromosome to his daughter, because then she wouldn't be a daughter. She'd be a son. So that's not the case. So he must have given the X little b to his daughter. 
well, if he gave the X little B to his daughter and she doesn't have color blindness, she must have gotten from her mother an X big B, which means she must be a carrier. So it is possible to determine if she's a carrier, not impossible. So we cross that one. Part C, I'm going to erase all this. It's getting a little bit messy here before we get to part C. All right, for part C, if individual 3, 5 is a carrier, so individual 3, 5 is right here. If she's a carrier, that would mean x big B, x little b. Then all of her female children will have red, green color blindness. Well, we don't have any children to look at here. We don't have a fourth generation, but we don't need that. We can see that she is perfectly capable of donating an x big B to either her sons or her daughters. She could give an x little b. It's a 50-50 chance, which means that all of her female children would not have red, green color blindness. It's possible that she could give her daughters x big B, or it's possible she could give her daughters x little b, and depending on what they get from their father, that's also going to influence it, which means we cannot say that 100% of her children, all of her children, will have red, green color blindness. So let's look at part D. If individual 2, 3, so that's this individual right here, 2, 3. Clean this up a little bit here. Individual 2, 3. If she is a carrier, so if we have x big B, x little b, then there's a 50% chance her male child will have red, green color blindness. So here is her male child right here, and 50% chance that he is x little b, y. Well, the y chromosome comes from dad. That comes from over here on this side, so we don't need to worry about that. So is there a 50% chance that he gets an x little b from mom? Sure, because mom could give an x big B or mom could give an x little b. It's a 50% chance. D is definitely going to be our correct answer in this item. All right, we have time to look at one more. Let's just clean up some of this mess here. All right. In this one, which of the following statements best describes the inheritance of an X-linked dominant disorder? Now, we've been dealing with X-linked recessive traits like hemophilia and red green color blindness. So let's take a look at a, a dominant trait. I'm just going to use big T for trait. So having the trait, whatever trait this happens to be, is a dominant trait, which means X little t does not have a trait. And we're dealing with an X-linked disorder, so we also need to consider Y chromosomes, and Y, again, not applicable. So we have to read each statement and see which one best describes how a dominant trait would be inherited. So let's take a look at A. A man who has the disorder has a 0% chance of passing it on to his son. So a man who has the disorder would be X big T, because he's male, and we have a Y. So it says he has a 0% chance of passing it on to his son. Well, what's he going to give his son? He's going to give his son a Y not going to give his son an X because his mom is giving an X. So if dad gives an X too, well, that's a daughter, not a son. So I kind of like that statement right off the bat. But let's go through the rest of them and make sure that there's nothing we're missing here. So part B, a man who has a disorder has a 50% chance of passing it on to his daughter. Well, a man has to give traits to his daughter. And because he's got no little t, that would be no trait, he has to give an X big t, which means his daughter has to have the trait. So it's not a 50% chance, it's a 100% chance. So it's not B. Part C. A woman who is heterozygous for the disorder has a 100% chance of passing it on to her son. So a woman who is heterozygous would be X big T, X little t. She would have the trait, but she also carries the allele for no trait. Which means when she passes it on to her son, she could give her son a big T, or she could give her son a little T. It's a 50-50 chance. It's not a 100% chance, so it can't be that. Last one, D. A woman who is heterozygous for the disorder has a 100% chance of passing it on to her daughter. Well, that answer is kind of the same as the last one. She's going to give either a big T to her daughter, or she's going to give a little T to her daughter, and it's 50-50 which one she has in her ovum when that fertilization takes place, which means it's not a 100% chance, it's 50%. So that just confirms what we thought in the first place. Answer A is the only reasonable answer here.